I've made quite a few videos here on this channel talking about projectors. But the one thing I realized is I never made a dedicated video just talking about my Knoll LED projector, which I don't know how that happened. That's one of my primary video projectors I use here in my home theater. Somehow that's escaped me. So to correct that issue, I'm talking today exclusively about my Knoll LED projector. And make sure you stay to the end of the video so that you can hear about the feature or setting, whatever you wanna call it, that I recently figured out this projector has that has reinvigorated my love of this projector here in my home theater. So stay tuned. So to start this video out, I'm gonna give you a little background information on this projector. And some of this is gonna be a rehash because I've talked about my Null LED in other videos, but I never did a dedicated video about the projector. I was always talking about something else and then I would reference the Null LED and maybe talk a little bit about it. Let's talk about the background of Null systems and how I got this projector. I don't wanna start out by saying the Null systems company was a scam in terms of their projectors. I don't necessarily wanna say that, but it kind of was at the same time. I say that because their initial strategy for marketing and selling these projectors was to take an OEM product. So in the case of my Null LED, it was a Vivitech projector. Basically change one or two little features like the menu system or something like that and slap a Null Systems badge on it and then resell it for more money than what the original OEM product was for. And from doing research, because Null Systems that's around today is not the same company, they don't do the same things that they did 10, 15 years ago when they were in the projector and home theater kind of market. But really, like I said, I don't wanna say they were a scam, but Honestly, at the time, if I would have been looking at these kind of projectors back when they were actually produced, I can definitely see why people never bought the Null Systems projectors and bought the original OEM projector. So like I said, in my case, instead of spending 15 grand on a Null Systems LED projector, you could have bought the Vivitech projector for cheaper than that. And it was basically the exact same identical model with just a badge replacement and maybe like the menu system was changed slightly. But all the components, all the major features, were the same across the board. And they did that with multiple projectors, not just this one. Uh, they had several generations of projectors that they basically co-opted from OEM companies and then just relabeled them and resold them for more money. Like I said, they're still around today, but they're not the same company that they were back then. They don't make home theater products really. They don't make projectors or anything like that. They're a completely different kind of tech company nowadays than they were back then. How did I get this projector? I've mentioned this before in some of my other videos. The whole reason I started down this rabbit hole of finding these older high-end DLP projectors, and ultimately part of a reason I started this channel, was because I found the AVS forum uh, sub-forum for old high-end DLP projectors and a core group of guys that are in that forum that really were looking to find these older high-end units for pennies on the dollar because they were an old technology and JVC and Epson, Sony, the DILA and you know all those style of projectors, LCDs and everything, had really swept up the market and really took hold as the primary home theater projector you know style. And I spent over the course of several months reading every single post that was in that forum. And eventually I came across a post showing that there was this Null LED projector for $499 on eBay. And I mulled it over, I watched it over a course of time, got in contact with the seller, and ultimately that was the first high-end DLP projector that I actually bought and got here in my home theater, and it was all thanks to that AVS forum. This was a $15,000 projector when it first came out. So this was extremely high end. And like I said, I bought 
this projector off eBay for $499 with free shipping and plus tax. So it was like $520, $525, somewhere in that range after everything was all said and done. It's a beefy projector. Uh, if you look at the specs, this thing weighs somewhere in the range of like 35 pounds, give or take. The actual number will be up on the screen. It is a big, hefty unit. I mean, it's pretty wide. It's pretty tall. It's pretty deep. Uh, it takes up a lot of space. This is not a small kind of low budget modern home theater projector that kind of like fits in a shoebox that you see on like Amazon and some of these other places. This is a big dedicated home theater projector. It needs either a very heavy duty mount that you can screw into a stud if you're gonna hang it upside down, or it needs a very sturdy shelf that's either bolted into the wall like the one I have, or a very sturdy, heavy duty uh, freestanding shelf. Uh, because if you just try and throw this up with any little wall mount or any little ceiling mount, it's gonna tear that thing right out of the wall. So you need to make sure you have a very sturdy, very industrial heavy grade way of mounting this. Now this is also a DLP projector and the big reason I wanted to venture into this and why I bought this initially is that even though it's DLP, it is a three chip LED projector. Uh, I've touched on this in some of my other videos, but I'm gonna rehash it here for everyone who may be interested. With a projector like this Null LED, it is a three chip system. So instead of having one DLP chip with a color wheel and a light source behind it, this uses three independent primary color LEDs, a red, a green, and a blue that send everything through the three DLP chips and create the image and the color straight from those LEDs instead of having a color wheel and a light source behind it. So because of that, the colors are extremely vivid and extremely rich and can be extremely accurate to the color gamut that you're trying to uh, reproduce in your home theater. The other catch with that, although I've started to see more of it as I got more accustomed to my Marantz projector, which I've talked about that in another video. It'll be linked up here. But the Knoll LED has very minimal rainbow effect, uh, although it's not as good in terms of rainbows as the Marantz. The Marantz projector, somehow with their design, I've talked about this in other videos, that design of the Marantz projector is just awesome for reducing rainbows. And I'm sure there's a whole lot of reasons for that, but the Knoll LED is slightly worse than my Marantz, but it is, up until I got that Marantz, the least amount of rainbows I've ever seen on a DLP projector. And that is a huge benefit of having the three LEDs and the three chips that are in there uh, so that you don't have to use a color wheel. It makes the colors pop and it makes the rainbow effect uh, almost non-existent. It's still there if you try hard enough, but it's not there in majority of the content. Color saturation and color reproduction, all that stuff is one positive. The lack or very minimal amount of rainbow effect is another positive. Uh, and even another positive next to that is interesting contrast ratio. The Null LED produces probably the best interesting contrast ratio of any of the projectors I've had in here in my home theater. Now the Marantz is close and it can make interesting contrast look really good, but it still doesn't equal the Null LED after doing some more AB comparison and having more time here in my home theater. But still now when I AB it and really take some time to actually like look at it critically, the Null LED can produce a much better interesting contrast ratio when you have say a checkerboard pattern or something like that on the screen. But that is a huge benefit again to a projector like this and these real high-end DLPs in general are usually really good at reproducing interesting contrast ratio so that you can actually see a bright white, a peak luminance in some fashion of content on the screen and still maintain to our eye a deep black level. How that goes kind of out the window and you kind of lose all that positive interesting contrast ratio is when you go to a primarily dark scene that doesn't have a bright light source to trick your eye into seeing that interesting contrast. A lot of like sci-fi movies or say horror movies or thrillers that are set in very dark areas that don't have lights to really produce that 
white point, that bright luminance point to create the interesting contrast ratio. If it's say just uh, a space scene and there's no real stars or no sun or planet to create light, or it's a horror movie or a thriller or something like that that's maybe in like a cave or in an old haunted house and there's no lights on and you don't have that kind of bright point to trick your eye, the null LED shows its weakness in the fact that it can't get really low in terms of the black floor. Uh, it does have a dynamic iris. I've talked about this before as well. The dynamic iris on this version of that projector uh, is terrible. It is basically non-functional. If you put it on even the very lowest minimal setting, the image will pump uh, considerably with any form of a light in the scene and dark in the scene. You can see the image just go up and down, up and down, up and down. But that is a weakness of this projector. It just does not have a very deep black floor. And so when you get these really dark scenes, they tend to look gray. Again, if you can get a scene where there is a bright peak luminance in that image that can trick your eye into the interesting contrast ratio, those dark parts of the image will look much darker and the black floor will seem way lower in a scene like that. But if it's just strictly dark content on the screen, this projector is going to show its biggest limitation, which is going to be the really high black floor on something like that. So I knew going into buying this projector that the lack of a very deep black floor was going to be there, that that was going to be an issue I was going to have to contend with. And I still willingly made this purchase despite that, because I wanted to experience the positives that everyone in that AVS forum talked about. Interesting contrast ratio and the color reproduction and the lack of rainbows, really, in comparison to one chip uh, DLPs that use color wheels and just the overall kind of filmic feel. And one of the biggest positives in comparison to the Marantz, like I just talked about, is the lumen output. So the Marantz, while it can create a really good image on the screen, you're still going to be capped at like five, six, 700 lumens at max output. And that is if you have the iris fully open, uh, you're not really playing with a lower economy lamp setting. You've got the lamp on full mode. You've got the iris fully open. It's a new lamp that hasn't aged for several hundred hours and lost a bunch of brightness. Uh, so realistically, to get a really quality image that isn't washed out because you have the full lumen output being pumped out on that Marantz, you're still looking at maybe four or 500 lumens max in that range. Where the null LED, it excels in the fact that it's a thousand lumens. Granted, that's not extremely bright by today's standards, especially for HDR content that's in a lot of like 4K projectors. But in comparison, that thousand lumens, because of the LEDs that are in there, it can get much, much brighter and still maintain a really good, interesting contrast uh, ratio because the peak white is so much brighter, it tricks your eye into thinking that interesting contrast ratio is greater than it really is. And it provides just way more pop with the color saturation and the color reproduction. There is something to be said about having a brighter image because human eyes uh, work better with a brighter image. Um, you know, we're not like a dog or a cat or some other animals that can really uh, excel in low light conditions. Our eyes are more adapted to brighter light and we can see things better in brighter light. So if you have more lumens to put out on your projector screen and really get a brighter image while maintaining that interesting contrast ratio, the image seems way more pleasing and it's way easier to see details and stuff in the image because of that. So this leads me to the most recent like feature and setting that I realized this projector had that I didn't know I was actually gonna enjoy so much. And it took a little more digging and a little more research on the AVS forum to actually realize what the setting was and how it would be beneficial to me. Now, this may be a video I do kind of separately to go into more detail instead of just rambling on here and making this video longer than it's probably already gonna be. This null LED projector 
it's a little bit different than the Panasonic I had, than the Marantz that's in here, and even uh, different than the D-Vision projector that I have in here right now. And that is in the fact that this Null LED has a color gamut setting to DCI-P3, which is the digital cinema color gamut that was introduced in the mid 2000s. Now, some of you may not know what this is. Some of you may know what it is, uh, but to give you a little background, the DCI color gamut is a wider color gamut than Rec. 709, which is typically the standard for 1080p home theater projectors, which is what all my projectors I have here in my home theater are, they're 1080p projectors. So because this color gamut was created initially in the mid 2000s for actual commercial theater reproduction, so for colors and luminance and stuff there, it wasn't really effective or really utilized properly in the home theater environment at that time because everything was still SDR 1080p content that we were getting in the home theater in terms of like DVDs and Blu-rays or even a digital file, let's say. But as times have developed and grown over the years to where we are now in 2024, there's a plethora of HDR 4K content that has these expanded color gamuts. And so the DCI P3 color gamut really straddles that HDR BT 2020 kind of color gamut that's used in modern 4K HDR content. So I realized I could get a pretty close reproduction of that high dynamic range HDR content on this projector. And like I said, it took a little research. I had a look on AVS forum and a few other sites, but I basically turned it on, did some more color calibration and did some different stuff. And I have to say the image that the Null LED produces now, after going in and changing some settings to that DCI P3, changing the color temperature a little bit and some gamma settings to make it work. The image that it produces now after doing that, it's blown me away all over again like it was when I first got this projector back at the end of last year. Um, I've just been completely enthralled with the image that's created now by utilizing this DCI color gamut on this projector. So the colors are now way more vivid, even more vivid than what was in the Rec. 709 setting I was using. They're just more vivid, they're more saturated. And initially until I color calibrated it, they were so vivid and so overblown, it made things look a little cartoonish. But once I've been able to alter the colors and get them kind of down in line to where it needs to be properly, they look realistic, but they are just way more saturated, way more lifelike, way more vivid, uh, and just way more in line with like the HDR high dynamic range that we have nowadays. The black level has still remained the same. It still looks pretty good for what it is, you know, with its limitations. But the interesting contrast ratio is still there. It still looks great. It's even a little bit more improved because the peak white and the peak colors just seem way brighter now in this new color gamut. So you're getting a better interesting contrast ratio. And the gamma tracking is way more uh, linear to my eye. And I had to go in and play with the gamma because instead of doing a 2.2, uh, DCI gamma is set at a 2.6. And since I'm in a fully blacked out home theater that I can have total light control, the 2.6 gamma really does pop and really does create a, a really vivid striking image with this projector. The image is just so good now. Like it just has brought me all the way back around to this projector to where I am just wanting to play out more demo scenes and watch more content on this projector just to see what it looks like in comparison to what it was before and what it is compared to my other projectors I have here. And especially compared to the Marantz, which is still a really good, really high value projector for what it is. The new DCI color space settings I have on the Null LED it blows that Marantz away. The colors look just so dull and muted in comparison on that Marantz to the Null LED now with the DCI color gamut. Uh, it's like night and day. That is the big thing that kind of pulled me back in on this Null LED. The image is just wow. Like that is just what I can say, it's wow. The image is so good. I'm gonna wrap this video up because 
I've been sitting here talking for like an hour on this video, even though I'm sure it's going to be cut down. Uh, and I'm, you can maybe tell I'm even kind of losing my voice from talking so much. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to everyone. If you like this content that I produce on this channel, definitely consider hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you're notified when I produce more content. Uh, honestly, it really does help me out. It helps me grow the channel, uh, you know, and I'm getting closer to that 2000 mark. So I'm really looking to push that. If I'm lucky, maybe I can get to 2000 by the end of the year or maybe into the early parts of next year. It is a goal of mine. So thank you to everyone out there. I will see you the next time in the next video here on secondhand home theater. Thank you.